If you have an upholstered chair, but you want to paint the arms and legs, making sure to keep the upholstery nice and clean, today's video is for you. I have a few tips and tricks that'll help you make sure it looks seamless. I'm Denise from Salvaged Inspirations and welcome or welcome back to my furniture painting channel. Just let me get set up and I'll be right back. Let's start. Here's the This thrift chair gets a simple new look by painting the arms and legs. And I hope this easy project gives you ideas on how to update your older furniture. Something I keep learning and reminding myself is it doesn't always have to be all or nothing. Sometimes updating half a project makes all the difference. Here's the thrift chair Joanne found at her local restore. It's perfect for her upcoming bedroom makeover. And just FYI, Joanne is my sister's sister-in-law. The chair is in really good shape and condition, and someone loved it enough to reupholster it in this pink fabric. They did an impressive job with the piping. I wish I knew how to do that. Joanne also sent me this drawer from a bedroom set she bought online and asked me if I could match the color. I started by giving the arms and legs on this chair a really good cleaning with this white lightning cleaner. I didn't use my usual spray bottle technique because I didn't want any of the solution to get onto the fabric. The fabric, Joanne says, she'll be giving a cleaning once she gets this chair back. So instead, I sprayed a small amount onto a sponge and wiped it down that way, then made sure to rinse my sponge really well with clear water and wipe away all the residue. Instead of sanding and priming, I used slick stick to create a bonding surface for the paint. And using my one inch purdy brush, I painted the legs and arms of this chair, making sure not to get any onto the fabric. Here's a quick tip for any painting project. Use the correct and the right size brush for whatever project you're working with. I never try painting small areas with a large brush or large areas with a small brush. I always try to pick my paint brushes wisely because it makes the job so much easier and cleaner and more professional looking. When painting a chair that is already upholstered, another good tip is to take your time. Make sure that you're not in a rush when you're painting around existing fabric because you need to be pretty careful so you don't make a mess and get paint onto the fabric. So I just took my time and worked my way around these arms and legs. Making sure to take my time, I also utilize my paintbrush to the fullest. Here you can see I'm using the edge, the very, very edge tips of this pretty paintbrush to get right next to that uh, fabric right along the armchair. Uh, and I do this very carefully by not overloading my brush with the slick stick and making sure that I am applying just the right amount of paint to kiss the edge of that fabric. I also found it very helpful to flip the chair and maneuver the chair, uh, whether it be tilt it or, or turn it right upside down so I could get into the crevices that I couldn't otherwise see or have great access to when it was just standing upright. To give the chair, the arms and the legs of the chair a seamless look and make it look like it's right underneath that fabric, I just used my hand to pull the fabric away from the armchair as best I could. And then I took the tips of the paintbrush to go right underneath that fabric. You may even get a little tiny bit of paint on the fabric deep into the crease, but once you release the the fold and just have it sitting normally it'll look like a very seamless look so i just kept on working my way around the chair applying slick stick uh, so I would not have to sand. And I did take more footage of me applying the slick stick because of the contrast, the white contrast 
on the dark arms and legs. Whereas when I applied the paint, you're not going to see it quite as well because it's going over a light surface. But I just made sure to uh, go back into a few of the places, getting what I missed, and also making sure that I go back and I look, especially at the corners of the arms and the legs, to make sure there are no drips. You definitely don't want any drips on anything and you just want to go back and double check that it's all smoothed out nicely. And I know I keep repeating myself with this, but when working around fabric, don't rush. Just really take your time, relax with it and just go in and be more detailed with this because you don't want your fabric to get all mucked up with paint. Once I had my slick stick all laid down and it was all dry, it was time to choose a matching paint that was similar to the drawer, sample drawer that she had brought me. I chose these three colors uh, from the Silk All-in-One Mineral Paint line. And can you guess which one I chose just by looking at these three? Winner ended up being Sunkissed. And the reason being is it looked slightly lighter than uh, my third choice. However, when paint dries, it always dries a little bit darker. So I thought this would be the best match. I went ahead and I applied two coats of Sunkiss Silk All-in-One Mineral Paint to the chair arms and legs, as exactly as I applied the slick stick. There's no top coat that was required because it's all included. And that was the easy peasy makeover for this chair. So here's the before. And here's the after. It looks so much more fresh and feminine. And I hope Joanne loves it. So thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. If so, please give it a like. Leave a comment down below. And you can always find me over at salvagedinspirations.com where I have over 500 furniture painting tutorials teaching you how to make your furniture beautiful. Until next time, I hope you have a fabulous day and I'll see you again soon. Bye guys.